Hello, I'm Philip Duncan from Weather Watch TV on YouTube with your September Climate Watch update as we take a look at the highs and lows, the temperatures, the rain, and the trends that are likely to be forming. So let's kick off with the animated air pressure map for the 2nd of September. Uh, brighter colors show high pressure, darker colors, low pressure. The Southern Ocean has been very, very stormy for the last couple of months, especially in the month of August. We saw some pretty big storms coming into the New Zealand area by the end of the month. And certainly as we kicked off on the 1st of September on the Sunday, plenty of thunderstorms around northern New Zealand. What we see here is a cold front coming through, so we're still not finished with the windy westerly weather around the New Zealand area and around Tasmania, Bass Strait and the southeastern corner of Australia. So the stormy stuff carries on to the south, while high pressure seems pretty uniform tracking along from west to east. So let's try and make sense of what is happening. We'll first of all kick off with the La Nina watch. Now that carries on from the Bureau of Meteorology, but look at the uh, average of all models. This is it right here. So up in this block, that is the El Nino area. This is neutral and the blue, blue portion at the bottom is La Nina. So all the different computer models here have been sort of, this is where we've been by the way, tracking so far this year. We've been pretty much neutral smack bang in the middle. Over the next couple of weeks, we are expecting to see more of a La Nina trend. But look at this, it, it still doesn't really officially go down into La Nina. It depends on which computer model you're looking at from around the world. So if you're tracking these lines here, they are all pointing to La Nina. But if you're tracking these ones, they are staying in neutral and some of them even tick back up closer towards El Nino as we go towards December and January. So this is one to keep an eye on. We are seeing a bit of a change in the tropics. We're seeing warmer sea surface temperatures. We're seeing more low pressure to the north of New Zealand. And so this is pretty accurate at the moment. But whether or not it officially goes right down into that La Nina category is one thing. And even if it does, how long for? Because some models, quite a number of them, are suggesting this is quite short lived. So I think there's still a bit of, a lot of uncertainty about this. We've been pushing back about this since the very first beginning of the La Nina discussion earlier this year. And I'm glad we did because look at this, we are still into this neutral area right across the year. Now, the November one pushes right down. This could go officially into La Nina, but it's so borderline. I think it's going to be a wait and see. And the IOD, which is sort of the El Nino and La Nina of the Indian Ocean, pretty much the same, neutral. So that makes me think there is not a dramatically big shift coming to the weather patterns that we're seeing around Australia and New Zealand and the South Pacific for now, but we will keep an eye on things, obviously. So let's have a look now at the air pressure and how this is shaping up as we go into the month of September. High pressure on the uh, bright, pink red boxes and low pressure in the blue boxes. So this is pretty much carrying on the uniform pattern that we've been seeing for about the last few weeks, last three or four weeks. Back in sort of June and July, it seemed a lot messier where you'd get one big high coming through followed by one big low. Now we're seeing the highs sort of all stacked up neatly to the north and the lows stacked up neatly to the south. And in between, the windy westerlies, that's what these arrows indicate those spring-like windy westerlies, sort of the high pressure up here puts a lid on the storms. They can't come up all the way. And so that just puts lots of isobars here in this sort of snaky shape across the map. And so that's why we're getting these surges of windy weather. So that's how we kick off the month. As we go towards week two, not a great deal of change. We're still seeing big high pressure zones in Australia stretching out to the north of New Zealand, which means We've got the windy westerlies carrying on as we go into the second week. So this will be about three weeks of westerly winds by the time we get to the end of week two. Look at this big blue line here. South of that, this is all low pressure, uh, deep low pressure, 958 according to that map. We have seen some really low air pressure systems, 920s, 930s, 940s, 960s, right up close to New Zealand. So very stormy south of us. But like I say, more settled up here, keeps a lid on, on things. So that means the windy weather surges up to about where the red lines are and then it pushes back down again because it can't go into the high pressure. So we're still seeing spring-like weather, westerly driven conditions as we go into the second week. 
And as we go into the third week, once again, not a great deal of change. And as I've been saying for pretty much three months now, we had the winter of big. It was big high pressure systems, big low pressure systems. Well, what's this? It's another big low pressure zone that stretches down to Antarctica, up to Australia, 969 according to the estimate here. This is a long way out, three weeks away from now. Don't 100% lock this in. But what it shows you is just how unsettled the con uh, conditions are in the atmosphere at the moment south of us. That is normal for this time of the year because this is the sort of peak stormy season in the Southern Ocean. And we also see some of our biggest high pressure zones at this time of the year, like this one coming out of the Indian Ocean as we head towards the later part of the month. Mild weather here too, coming down subtropical, if this is how it looks by the time we get to the middle portion of the month. So what we're seeing is um, a fairly uniformed setup. The lows stay to the south, the highs to the north. This is the rain format for the next 15 days. In the black boxes, not much. In the way of rain, in the white boxes, that's at least 100 millimetres or more. So we're seeing over here places uh, around the western side of Tasmania getting up to 150, 200 millimetres on the west coast. For New Zealand's west coast, we are seeing 300 to 400 millimetres in some of these areas. But you notice you go further to the north here, mostly dry in a number of places, thanks to those high pressure zones. And also because of the windy westerlies, some dry conditions over here in the east. So let's take a closer look at New Zealand. This is the area here where it is mostly dry. If you're in the green next to the blue, there's the green, there's the blue. So you're talking about 10 millimetres or so for the next two weeks in some of these very coastal areas. Not much for Hawke's Bay as well, 10 to 15 for some of you in the more coastal populated areas. But jump to the western side and uh, the pinks and the, and the blues that you're seeing there, 100, 150 millimetres, and like I say, down here in the mountains and ranges, 300, 400 millimetres plus. Very good news for the hydro dams. Those that wonder about where they are, take a look at, the, um, take a look at Google Earth, see where the middle part of the Southern Alps is, and everything east of that basically drains into many of those hydro dams. So basically leaning here. So if you see anything east of where I'm pointing, this side of it, that is good news for our hydroelectric dams across New Zealand. Marine wise, so when we talk about La Nina, what we're looking, what we're looking for is the sea surface temperatures over here along the equator in the Pacific zone to be warmer than average and on the eastern side, lower than average. So we are starting to see that more and more now. We've got this little blip here, which is still warmer than usual, but you can see the blues here starting to show and you can see the pinks and, uh, and the reds starting to appear. And then you come down to the New Zealand area, Tasmania to New Zealand, and that is also warmer than average. That's not necessarily anything to do with what's happening with La Nina, but you put those two combined, and that does sort of bode well for more wet weather or more cloud coming into the New Zealand areas. This is a closer version uh, from the Moana project. So anything that you see from zero and above in this shading means that compared to usual, this is warmer than usual. So this is what we call a marine heat wave when it starts to set in. And that's what we're seeing around the North Island. Marine heat waves now appearing, which has been, you know, it's been absent for a while, from, for all of this year, from my memory. Uh, it was last year that we were seeing a lot of marine heat waves. Now they're starting to creep in. And what does that mean? It means when you've got a thunderstorm or a slow moving band of rain over you, it is more likely to dump more wet weather and be more volatile. That's what a warmer sea does around us. So that's worth just keeping an eye on. And before I go, just have a look at the soil moisture uh, levels around the country. They're pretty good for this time of the year, although we do know it's drier than average in some of these eastern spots, but it's not looking too problematic for most of you right now. What we need is a little bit of spillover from those westerly systems, and maybe just one more burst of rain along the east would be quite good, but for now, considering we're kicking off spring with a soil moisture mat that looks uh, like that, I think many of you will be pretty happy. But if you're not, please do let me know. Let me know why. It's always helpful so we can keep up to date with the weather trends in your part of the world, your part of the country, and uh, stay focused on that. Because as we go through the next few weeks, frost, snow, they're all possible. We're not finished with the winter weather just yet. If we were, this would be called summer, not spring. That is all from me. We'll see you again next time in our next Climate Watch update one month from now.